Do you know the top 10 types of medications used in diabetes? Today, we're going to embark on a journey to explore these important medications, each with its unique role in managing diabetes. Understanding these options is vital in appreciating how they work to control blood sugar levels, mitigate symptoms, and prevent complications. As we go into details, you'll learn about everything from insulin to bile acid sequestrants. So get ready. Stay with us to discover the top 10 types of medications used in diabetes. Remember, diabetics should consult with their healthcare providers for the most suitable individualized diabetes medications and treatment plans. Starting our list at number one, we have insulin. Insulin, a hormone that regulates the amount of glucose in your blood, is a cornerstone in diabetes management. For those with type 1 diabetes, their bodies do not produce insulin, making it essential to their daily regimen. A variety of insulin forms are available, each with different rates of onset, peak times and durations of action. For people with type 2 diabetes, insulin is often introduced when other medications can't quite get the job done in controlling blood sugar levels. Moving on to number 2, we have metformin. This oral medication is a common prescription for those having type 2 diabetes. It works by reducing glucose production in the liver and improving the body's response to insulin. This dual action helps keep blood sugar levels in control. These two are often the first line of defense in diabetes management. Moving on to the third type of medication, sulfonylureas. These medications are interesting because they stimulate the pancreas to release more insulin. By doing so, they assist in controlling blood sugar levels. Some common examples of sulfonylureas include glyburide, glipizide, and glimepiride. Next, we talk about dipeptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitors, or as they're more commonly known, DPP4 inhibitors. These medications work by increasing insulin secretion and reducing the release of glucagon, a hormone that raises blood sugar levels. This dual action helps to maintain a steady and healthy blood sugar level. Some familiar names in this category are citagliptin, saxagliptin, and lenagliptin. Each of these medications has a unique role and mechanism, but they share a common goal, to help manage and control diabetes. So remember, sulfonylureas and DPP-4 inhibitors are powerful tools in the diabetes management. Next on our list are meglitinides. These medications work by stimulating the pancreas to release insulin. The action of meglitinides is shorter lived. Common examples of meglitinides include repaglinide and nataglinide. Next, let's talk about glucagon-like peptide 1 or GLP-1 receptor agonists. These medications increase insulin secretion, slow down the emptying of your stomach and decrease your appetite. This triple of actions helps to regulate blood sugar levels effectively. Exonatide, liraglutide and dulaglutide are examples of this type of medication. Both meglitinides and GLP-1 receptor agonists play crucial roles in the management of diabetes. They offer unique benefits by addressing different aspects of the disease. Meglitinides help to boost insulin production quickly, while GLP-1 receptor agonists provide a more comprehensive approach, tackling not just insulin secretion, but also digestion and appetite. Remember, everyone's journey with diabetes is different, and these medications offer unique benefits in the management of diabetes. Now let's explore into our final four types of diabetes medications. First up, we have thiazolidinediones. These medications work by improving insulin sensitivity in the body's cells, allowing them to better utilize the insulin that's already present. Examples of TZDs include puglitazone and rosiglitazone. Next, we have sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors, or SGLT2 inhibitors for short. These medications take a different approach. They lower blood sugar by increasing the excretion of glucose in the urine. This means that less glucose is reabsorbed into the bloodstream and more is excreted when you urinate Examples of SGLT2 inhibitors include canagliflozin, dapagliflozin, and empagliflozin. Our third group is alpha glucosidase inhibitors. These slow the absorption of carbohydrates from the digestive tract, which helps to prevent spikes in blood sugar levels after meals. Acarbose and miglitol are two examples of alpha glucosidase inhibitors. Finally, we come to bile acid sequestrants. Now these are a bit different from the others. They help lower blood sugar levels by binding to bile acids in the intestines. This affects glucose metabolism and can lower the amount of sugar in your blood. An example of a bile acid sequestrant is colcivellum. Each of these medications has a unique way of managing blood sugar levels, and each comes with its own set of potential side effects. 
It's important to remember that what works best will depend on individual factors, such as the type of diabetes, the person's lifestyle, and their overall health. In the end, the goal is to find a treatment plan that effectively manages blood sugar levels, minimizes side effects, and fits well with the person's lifestyle. With numerous types of medications available, it's likely that there is an effective treatment plan for achieving optimal control of diabetes. These four medications offer additional options for individualized treatment plans. Remember, everyone's experience with diabetes is unique. Each individual may react differently to medications, hence the importance of a personalized treatment plan. It's essential to collaborate with healthcare providers to develop a regimen that suits your specific needs, considering factors such as age, overall health, and the presence of other medical conditions. Our diabetes healthcare experts will provide more insights on this topic in our upcoming video. If you found this video enlightening, why not join us? Subscribe to our channel, Diabetes Academy. Let's join the journey to defeat diabetes.